Okay, I've been asked to make a helper video for section 3L, problem number two. And so this problem gives you, um, it says you have a triangle and it gives you the coordinates of the three vertices. Notice you have three coordinates, so it's in three dimensional space. I did not draw a triangle in three dimensional space. My triangle is totally not to scale, not at all. Didn't even consider it. I just know I have a triangle and I drew just a generic triangle just to help get me started on this. Okay, because there's no way I'm going to try and draw this in three dimensional space. So the first question says state which two vectors you could use to find the angle at and then there's two parts to the problem. They say the angle at point A. So that would be this angle right here. So if I want to find the measure of angle A, so I'm trying to find the measure of angle A, I need to find the angle between two vectors. I'm going to have this vector right here, AB, and I'm going to have this vector right here, AC, because I have a new formula that helps me find the angle between two vectors. So if I can write this vector, this side of the triangle as a vector, and if I can draw this side of the triangle as a vector, then I can use my new formula that says cosine theta is equal to um, u dot v over uh, the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Okay, given that u is one of these vectors and v is the other vector. All right, so that's what we need to do here to get the measure of angle A. Then it asks you, oh, sorry, so you're supposed to write that down. So the answer, sorry, for A, I, the answer would be that you need to um, find the vectors A, B. The vectors that you need to use are A, B, and A, C. So uh, remember when you are trying to find the angle between two vectors, it has to be where their, their tails are, not where the heads are, okay? Not where the pointy parts are, but where they started at. So that's where the angle is gonna be. So you gotta make sure they're going away from the angle. So A, B is going away from the angle and A, C. So that's how you get the answer to A, I. The answer to AII, that one is asking for, what is it asking for? B. It's asking for the angle at point B. So to get the measure of angle B, that would be this angle right here. I need to think about the two vectors going away from B. So that would be going this way. So that would be B to A. B to A. Okay, so if I use a different color maybe for this one. So for this angle, I'm going to have to go this way, B to A, and I'm going to have to go this way, B to C. Okay, so I'm going to need B to A, and I'm going to need B to C. Those are the vectors that I'm going to have to use. Okay, so then it says find all the angles of the triangle. Okay, so they've set us up for success here. They've said use these two vectors. Um, and here's the formula to find the angle between two vectors. Okay, so that's going to help us find the measure of angle A. Now, next question is, well, what is the vector AB? Okay, so I'll help you with that one. So in order to find that angle, we need to take these two points. And if I'm trying to find vector AB, sorry, that got a little messy. Remember, you start with the second point and you subtract the first point. So this is going to be equal to B, which is 0, 2, 5, minus A, which is 1, 2, 3. So you're just going to subtract them, and that will get you the vector. Okay, so if you subtract the coordinates of the endpoints, that gets you the vector in between them, okay, because that gets you the shift. So if you don't remember how that works, you can just, you can always just sort of test it out. If you can't remember, oh, which one was I supposed to do first? You can do something in two dimensions, okay? So I'm always forgetting how to do things. So if I were to just randomly pick some points, say um, this one is 2, 1, and then I put um, another point right here, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that was 5, 4. I can graph that and I can go, okay, so that's, oh, you know what? I don't like those numbers because it's going to give me 3 and 3. That's, let me move that. So let's put it here at 5, 4. Okay, so the vector here, it's 3 to the right and 2 up. So if this was my A and my B, then vector AB 
vector AB would be equal to 3 and 2, 3 and 2. Well, how can I get that by looking at these coordinates of these points? Okay, I would have to do, uh, to get the 3, I would have to do 5 minus 2. And to get the 2, did I mess something up? 2 and 1. Oh, I forgot to change this. That was a 3. Uh, forgot to change that. Okay. Um, and then to get the y coordinate would be 3 minus 1. So it's the second point minus the first point. It's second point minus the first point. Okay, so if you ever forget that, you can always just make a simple example to figure that out. All right, so now back to my vector AB. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. And 5 minus 3 is 2. Here is vector AB. You're going to do the same thing to find vector AC. Then you can use this formula. You can get the dot product of your two vectors. Okay, so AB um, is going to be you know, this one, and then AC. So one of these is going to be your U. The other one's going to be your V. And you're going to just plug and chug, just like you did with the previous problem, where you just use the formula and figure it out. Okay, the last question says find the length of the longest side. So I'm gonna let you take it from there. Hopefully that's enough to get you started, okay? So you're just gonna be subtracting points to find all the vectors you need. We now know what vectors you need to find angle B and what vectors you need to find uh, the measure of angle A. And then of course the three angles inside of a triangle have to add up to 180. So you can find this one. By the way, in the back of the book, when you look at the answers, they got the third, the, the third angle by first rounding off the answers to um, measure of angle A and measure of angle B to three significant figures, and then they found uh, the measure of angle C. So if you don't round off your answers to three significant figures, you might end up getting a slightly different answer than what they have in the back of the book. That's what happened to me. But if I rounded these off to three significant figures and then subtract them to one, from 180, you will get the measurement for C that you can find in the back of the book. Okay, so that was a little disturbing. All right, the so last question, find the length of the longest side. When you have a triangle and you have one side that's clearly longer than the other, so I'm just going to draw a triangle with one side that's clearly longer than the others. Here's my longest side. It is opposite, notice it is opposite the biggest angle. It's opposite the biggest angle. So once you figure out what these angles are, you're going to look for the largest angle and you're going to take the side opposite that and then you're going to find the magnitude of that vector, okay? Because you are solving for all the vectors here. You're getting all of these vectors. So um, once you figure out what the angles are, just take the side across from the largest angle. That will be your longest side and then take the magnitude. All right, so I didn't do the whole problem for you, but hopefully that helps at least a little bit, all my ramblings. And if that's not enough to get you all the way through it, let me know and I'll ramble on some more.